This is Byron Gordon for the SES Conference Channel. We're live day two at SES New York. We just got out of the social media marketing uh, panel for building brand, and we're talking to Dave of Digital Voodoo. How are you, Dave? I'm doing great. How about you? Wonderful I'm conference. Great conference. It's been a great conference. It was a packed panel. I wanted to pick up on a theme you mentioned that seemed to, uh, I thought was rather insightful. It was, you said social media is the product experience. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, when, when we think about traditional media, you know, to sort of set the stage for this, when we think about traditional media, as a marketer, I'm concerned with a message and, you know, putting some sort of thing out there that someone can react to and understand what's my value proposition, you know, and so on. When I look at what someone has posted on Flickr or shared through YouTube or created in a blog post or something like that, the conversation that's going on, sometimes it's about the media, it's about the advertisement, you know, and whatnot. But the vast majority of times, it's about the actual product experience. It's whether or not this thing worked, how well it worked, I really liked it, I got this enjoyment, I went to this place. It's like, it's a story about the actual product, it's not about the advertising. Consequently, it sort of leads to this insight that says social media really begins on the operations side of the house, down you know under the, CM the COO someplace, not under the CMO. It may be the CMO who's responsible for tracking it or monitoring it or deciphering it or whatever, but ultimately, when you want to control the conversation on the social web, you don't do it by controlling what people are saying or what they're able to talk about or so on. You control it by controlling your own behavior. You work with your customer service teams, with your warranty policies, with the store appearance, with the product availability, the feature set. Those are the things that drive the actual conversations. You gave uh, some good examples of a few sites that incorporated social media really well, and I thought maybe you could share with our viewers a few of those, so perhaps uh, you know, copying can be the sincerest form of flattery, I don't know, but maybe you could mention some of those sites. Sure, um, I mean, one, one of my personal favorites, and it's a, it's a, a trivial example, but it gets, it gets right, to the, right to the core point here. Uh, there's a, a coffee bar in Austin called Progress Coffee. They uh, offer a French press, and if you've ever seen a French press, it looks like this little thing that, uh, if you've never seen one before, they're kind of intimidating, you know, it's like, <laughs> set it down in front of you. Well, when, when, number one, they have a little timer that they've snapped on the side of it. Number two, when they set it in front of you, they set it down and they say, okay, when the timer goes off, and they, and they sort of show you with their hand, like, you know, do this, right? What that does is that says, for someone who's never used one of these things before, because they're really enjoyable to get one and share it with friends and you feel like you're having this really authentic coffee shop experience, it's a really nice thing. If you've never seen one and you push too early, the coffee's weak, if you push too late, the coffee's cold and oily and it's, you know. So they've got a little 50 cent thing, 50 cent innovation that snaps on the side, tells you exactly when to do it, and then because they showed you how to do it, the net result is every customer has the same experience and it's an excellent experience around the flavor and the temperature of the coffee then they've also got this sort of hands-on authentic experience. They put these two things together in a way that every customer is able to replicate mm. that experience. And then, then you go on Twitter and other places and you search for it, and you in fact find conversations about the French press at Progress Coffee. Right? So it's, you know, it's, it's that sort of thing. I talk a lot about Home Depot and the idea that uh, for, for Home Depot, and, and Home Depot is absolutely made for social media. When we think about, we, we, do, we do an innovation on our house, we build a new deck or something like that. First thing that we do is we invite our friends over, come on over for a glass of wine on our new deck. Oh wow, this is great, how, how did you, how, what did you do? Well, I went to Home Depot, they had a clinic, I, you know, I, I learned how to do this stuff, they had all the stuff available. Those conversations become part of the social web. Those conversations are largely driven in operations because it's not the 80 cents off on Duracells, it's the fact that the materials were available, the associate knew what I needed, and knew how to walk me through the process and that kind of thing. The store was clean, I could find all the stuff. Those are all operations issues. Those are not marketing issues. So the CMO has an absolute, has a role in this, but the COO, very much in social media, there's a new alignment coming between the COO and marketing, and it's all around social media. And it, and it gets to our, our first question about social media really being defined in the product experience. So any final, a few tips maybe, just for those that are really trying to get the grasp around social media and building brand. Yeah, I, th I think the, the, the starting place is, is listening, really, really listening. So through a tool like, like Google Alerts, free tool, takes a minute to set it up, you can start to get an idea of where you're being mentioned. It doesn't, doesn't monitor everything, you, you, you won't see everything, but you'll see enough to recognize, hey, I really ought to be paying attention to this. Uh, then there are a set of, of, of listening platforms. There's Techergy, there's Radiant 6, Collective Intellect, Symphony, Blog Pulse, you know, there's, there's a whole slew of these things. And they, they provide really nice analysis of what's going on. Uh, they've got workflow integration built in so that you can actually send uh, things that you find to people who can do something about it within your organization, and you can start to make sense of what's going on on the social web. That's kind of the starting point. 
Uh, from there, once you've got a real understanding of what people are saying, of who your audience is, what your business objectives are, and so on, then you're ready to look at things like, should we have a Facebook presence? Should we be on Twitter? I mean, you know, there, there's some of the basics, like go get your names in places so that things like uh, the Exxon Mobil thing don't, uh, don't become an issue for your company. But before you actually step out and open up channels on the social web between you and your customers, understand what they're saying, understand what they're, what they're talking about, what the issues with your own product are that may cause you problem, you know, it's not that the conversations aren't happening, they're very much happening, but when you start to directly engage your customers around these conversations, you've really got to be prepared to act. So start by listening and work from there. Thanks so much for talking to us, Dave. You bet, thank you. Thank you. And there's more to come from SES New York. It's day two, stay tuned.